We are through at Keep. No, no. We, are, we are at the Keep It True Festival 2013. And when I talk about legends all the time, in this case, we really have a legend here because it's legend, legendary new wave British heavy metal band. Please introduce yourself. Um, I'm Pete Howarth, original member of uh, Legend. I'm Aggie Obe, the bass player. I'm Mike Lazala, and I tried to sing. <laughs> uh, Jack Palo, and I'm the drummer. Neil Howarth, I'm the rhythm guitarist. Okay, my first question is, did you enjoy your show tonight? Loved it. Yeah. We loved it, and we noted that when we left the stage, there seemed to be as many people mm -hmm. in the audience as when we started, so we thought we, we must have done all right. <laughs> And they all wanted more, which is good, you know? Yeah. There's nothing better than getting an encore, but because we used up our time allocation, it was just, we couldn't do it. But they clearly wanted us to play more. And we could have done, I mean, we normally do like two hour sets when we play. Um, but but we, yeah, it was good. The sound was better on stage than I thought it would be. Um, we had a few hiccups, a few issues. Um, I think about two thirds way through the set, um, the next band, drummer was doing a sound check immediately behind our drummer. Really? Yeah. Oh, so we were hearing like two dr two snares and two bass drums and... Oh, you played that fast. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we just... Six drums were kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> but I think, you know, we... I, th I think we nailed it. Everybody seemed to, They seemed to like it, you know. And the interesting thing is that they responded to certain parts of the songs in a way that we weren't used to. You know, it's like... Yes, we are heavy, but there's a lot of light and shade and a lot of melody oh, and, a, you know, and all that sort of thing. And then we just play some, and they just, the crowd would just go ballistic, and it's like, you're not supposed to do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, you know, it was, we're, we're all really pleased with it, you know, yeah. and... Uh, My first contact with you was when uh, Monster Records from the USA okay, released yes, uh, so your four uh, re vinyls on yeah. CD for the yeah. first time. And my first impression was, this is a missing link between 70s rock and heavy metal. What, would you agree with that? Or? Well, I think it's... I think we're just a missing link. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's the shape of our skulls. The problem is, because we've, we've been associated with the new wave of British heavy metal. That's what you but are. but yeah. we were playing heavy metal way before that. Really? I was playing heavy metal in 1974, 1975. Really? Yeah. So uh, my influences were, you know, and I think it's probably the same for for Reggie, yeah. maybe even for Neil. I don't know, but my influences: Jimi Hendrix, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, you know, and then Rush, and then you know, and Judas Priest, early Judas Priest, and a lot. Yeah, rocker. Well, no, Sad Wings of Destiny. Yeah. yeah. But. Um, yeah, so I, it was a bit of a hybrid, you know, yeah. but we just knew what we wanted to do and we just did it. And, and a lot of people said, oh, they're a new wave of British heavy metal band, which, yeah. which is great. I mean, you yeah. know, but we've never written, you know, we don't write songs about denim and leather and yeah. motorbikes and things like that. We're, we've always been quite sort of social, political, mm. you know, kind of emotional kind of band. We take the lyrics very seriously the melodies very seriously, yeah. but when we kick ass, we kick ass. <laughs> and I think, I think because we do that, we try to leave room for the vocals as well, so that, yeah. you know, quite often you'll find that as soon as the vocals kick in, the band comes down, yeah. and, and we have passages where the vocals are, are, are doing the verse, and then the band comes in with a kick ass. <laughs> 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 but it's important, you know, you write a song, and it's, it's, it's not just the drumming and the bass, and yeah. the guitar and the rhythm guitar and the vocals, it's a whole, it's, we're a band. Yeah. So if Mike's going to sing lyrics that we think are quite important and quite profound, then people need to be able to hear what he's saying. Yeah. You know, so that's just our philosophy and that's what we've always, always done. And we're here 33 years later on. But what really sounds unique to me on these old songs is the, all these stops you are doing. You, yeah. like in... Uh, Oh, what is the name of the song? I can't remember it right now. But uh, Death in the Nursery. Yeah, something like that. But uh, choices, you know. Choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Whose idea was this strange stuff? Were you influenced by King Crimson also? <laughs> I think I actually think it's just it's just when we were crafting the songs. 
Yeah. You look, what you don't want is a song just to go on for three or four minutes and it just be the same all the way through. So you yeah. want the song to actually have uh, quiet and loud, yeah. light and shade. You want to, you want to, uh, um, you want to have uh, you have different changes in rhythm, anything that that actually makes the song more interesting, you know, and and, and things that and emotional. And emotional right? yeah. I think I think it's the emotional side of it, mm. you know. So you write a passage that actually, you know, the music complements the lyrics in a way that it, it really does give the sense of what the lyrics are all about. So yeah. the guitar work is always complementing the lyrical content I think and then yeah and it tells a story uh, and and you know uh, and that's the way it's constructed and it comes very naturally you know to, to, to a lot of red tonight yeah um, which is off the new album the dark place the it starts off you know quiet yeah quiet and really heavy and then suddenly it just goes doo -doo 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 and the crowd went, whoa! It was like Pink Floyd were on stage, you know what I mean? It was just like really... And then not, we, not many uh, bands are doing this anymore. That's the thing. But yeah, I mean, I was... It, it's like... This is the craft of writing songs, I think, is, yeah. is that you, 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 know, you, you need to put those things in. You need to put space in it. You need, mm. to, put, you need to put color yeah. and space and... You know, that, that, well, you only have to listen to Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin to know. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Child yeah. in Time by Deep Purple. I yeah. mean, so many bands have done it. So it's but dynamics. It, yeah. It's a dynamics. Exactly. Yeah. So, how did you record your albums back in the day? Because it sounds like you played live, maybe some overdubs here and there. Well, the first albums? Yeah, yeah. they were on 8-track tape. 8-tracks? Yeah, well, was much. it 16? <laughs> Legend, and yeah, the first one was, was eight yeah, track. Yeah, the second, but they were in it. It was in a studio, and they, they had eight, eight track. Sorry. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But in the studio, it so said it was a lot of bouncing. You know, you had to bounce yeah. it down, and uh, so it was. And it was. It was quite raw. The first one. The second yeah. one was a bit. The production was well, a bit better. We, did, we didn't have much money, so we had to be really well rehearsed. Yeah. Get in the studio and do it in in, in a few days. Um, and that's what we did. We'd been rehearsing for like rehearsing and writing for about a year for the first album. Okay, yeah. yeah. So we just went in, did it, and that's what we did. You know, um, the new album. What we tried to do because everything's digital now. What yeah. we tried to do with the new album is go into the studio and basically play it live, yeah. and then yeah, do. That with the drums and everything. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, any necessary overdubs or errors okay. can be fixed, but that, that was just in the same in the old analogue tape mm -hmm. days. Yeah. Um, but they used to do it with sellotape, you know. Like, yeah, and razor blades. And razor blades. <laughs> 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 well, cut that bit out of the tape, you know, cut that bit out and yeah. stick it back together. Yeah. Um, but yeah, with, with, you know, it's all about, it's not about our egos, it's all about the music. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. we don't have, this is 30 years on, we're just doing it because we love it. And that's the motivation. And it sounded like I expected it on stage. It was amazing great tonight here. And Thank you me. did a great job, by the way. Yeah. I think you were in the original lineup, or? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I, I wasn't born then. But, <laughs> <laughs> but how did you know about the band Legend? Um, well, we were at a party, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah. we're actually at Neil's, because um, I, I work with Peter in Jersey, and um, he was sort of like, oh, because you're a musician, come down, have a jam, and you know, yeah. and that was just how it started, you know, well, just uh, jamming covers yeah. really. Yeah, let's tell the story come properly. On, come up and play. What are you going to do? Are we going to do uh, what was it? Black Knight by Deep Purple, oh, yeah. yeah. And he goes, we all went, what the? <laughs> so you know, so he was in. You also did, you also did the middle part. <laughs> of course, yeah. Yeah, but it's. I mean, I mean, since the early albums when Dave Whitley was, was yeah. the original drummer, Dave, brilliant drummer, absolutely yeah. was. Um, drums, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, was a fantastic <laughs> part of writing those those early albums. And uh, to be perfectly honest, you know, in Jersey we're a pretty small community out there, and uh, talented drummers of the style we want and the feel we want and the passion we want yeah. are pretty hard to come by. There's loads of drummers, but just not right. I mean. Jack uh, did uh, the opening to Black Knight. Me and Peter looked at each other and thought, "Yeah, <laughs> you know." So. I mean, he likes he, he likes heavy rock and he likes metal, but his influences are like yeah. Frank Zappa and a, and a whole host of Maybe other Rush. musicians. Rush, yeah. yeah, Neil Peart. Yeah. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, he's like me. I'm, hello. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. 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 I mean, we, um, my influences started off with Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Then Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, a little bit of Led Zeppelin. Then I got into King Crimson. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pink Floyd and a whole host of other things, a bit of jazz and all that. So, but I also like lyricists. You know, I like the lyrics of, yeah. uh, of, of, of the songs. Um, and that's probably how the whole thing began to formulate. Uh, Mike came from a completely different background. He, he, you like Roy Harper, well, didn't you? I was well. Roy Harper's my all-time hero. Which one? Roy Harper. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah he, he's, he's just exactly. yeah, he, you're fantastic. Uh, Blue Sky Thinking is Nick Harper as his son. Yeah. And Roy Harper was the original because I'm, I'm a child of the you know 60s and 70s. So you I was born in I was born in the 50s. Oh. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, but but I was formative music years was was yeah. all to do with the Beatles and all that kind of stuff yeah. you know that was going on then and then and then this yeah oh, well would have, would love to experience yeah. that yeah well I'll swap with you and uh, and uh, then I can be a lot younger oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah so my influences were all of that kind of thing yeah, yeah. and then as I became a bit more discerning and, and started growing I, I started like liking very much like Pink. Pink Floyd and all those prog rock yeah, stuff, yeah. you know, I, en I really enjoyed that. And then, um, and then, but my all-time favourite was Roy Harper, okay. uh, who was a, just a singer guitarist. Yeah. But he, but the thing is, he put so much emotion into songs, and so yeah. I think that's, and I think I kind of that that's what I bring is melody and emotion and all that kind of stuff, um, and uh, and. Uh, that's contribution to the band. And your vocals are unique, even to this yeah, day. Yeah, they're not. They don't. I, I'm not good at screaming. <laughs> you don't need that. You, you have this special voice. You are like the Joe Cocker of uh, heavy metal. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. <laughs> the wild card. Yeah. <laughs> Just need to start waving your arms. Yeah. No, don't do that. <laughs> But you didn't. Oh, you didn't jump from the drum riser tonight. <laughs> no, because I wanted to survive the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the actual session. Just to make everybody know that there was this picture on the CD release when you uh, jump, jumped off from the drum riser like this. <laughs> But in those days I wasn't 60, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> to do, I, I mean, I, I, could, I could possibly do it now, but I might do it myself. So. But that's what I used to do then. You know, yeah. I used to be quite athletic then. <laughs> So let's get round to Eggy, because he yeah. is the missing link. Yeah. <laughs> the missing link. All the <laughs> He's turning into Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> what oh a, what? You are as well. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> It's a meeting of Santa What I still don't understand is how were you able... You, you had to with the huge drums and you had mm. uh, several instruments, you had the vocals, the backing vocals. How were you able to record a record with eight tracks? Please tell the a young lot of people a lot how of, to do that. Yeah, a lot of bounce down. So first of all, you'd, you'd get the drums on a, a few tracks ah. and, and then and the bass. And then you mix it. Then you mix it down. To two tracks. Two tracks. Ah. That's how we used to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Then when it went up to 16 tracks, it was a bit easier. So, But yeah. we still have to do the mix down. Yeah. So that's it. It's carved in stone. Um, the production of our first two albums was was really bad, but people thought that's a unique sound. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was rough. It was raw. The studio that we used all those years ago had never recorded a rock band ever. Really? It was all country and western and things like that. <laughs> it was and western. Country and western. Uh, yeah. It wasn't a brilliant <laughs> studio, but it's all we could afford. <laughs> Yeah. That's all that was available as well, I think. Mm. And were the releases on a real label or was it your own label? I still don't know that. Uh, it, was, it was the, the it was studio's the label. Yeah. Ah, sure. yeah. Yeah. So we recorded it at Workshop Records Studio. They released it on the Workshop Records label. Well, did you have a distribution back like then? Yeah, we had a distribution and we, the record went worldwide, but we didn't know about it. Okay. It was yeah, only there was when no the, internet then. Yeah, <laughs> there was no oh, feedback at all. It was only when the internet came out that we realised people all over the world had, yeah. uh, had been buying our records. But so you know about the prices for the uh, for your original records right now? Or mm. I don't yeah. know. Tell me. I've got one in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> you have some at home? <laughs> I think so. There was a, there yeah, was a re release even, uh, I think, from your first record on Vinyl. Yes. Yeah. Is it I think this yeah, 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 it's official re release. Um, with Gatefold Sleeve and the lyrics yeah, and all that sort great. of stuff. Yeah. I mean, we've been signing loads of them today, yeah. um, which is great that stuff's sort of preserved, you know? Yeah. And 
you know, but yeah, the original albums are, are still collectible. Uh, and um, that's got nothing to do with us, that's just the, just the yeah. way it was, you know. Yeah. But our new album has just come out, that we just released The Dark Place. You know, we've had pre-orders from all over the world. Malaysia and... South Korea. South, South Korea. Korea. <laughs> yeah. from the Bolivia. US, so you've got, you've got a big fan US, base in the US and yeah, all over Europe. Because the records maybe the distributed. Oh, that's true. Yeah, 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 you know, I mean, it's... It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's Dennis, I think. Dennis, he's a yeah, Dennis Playboy. Yeah, he's yeah, a great good. guy. Oh, exploring that. all the good bands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, he's well. It's funny. He was the one that he went out of his way to make contact with me personally. And I, I can't remember how, but it was uh, no. He managed to find out. I think it was my phone number, and he just sort of said, "Hi, it's Dennis from Texas." Yeah. I went, "Hello, Dennis from Texas." <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "I want to release all your old stuff on the anthology." Yeah. And. Um, all I had was the big old 16-track master tapes. You had them? Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, I said, well, if they we're going to... They weren't in particularly good condition, They were they? in bad condition, you know? Really? Yeah. So he said, look, if you ship them out to me in Texas, they have this technique where you, you bake them in an bake, oven, bake yeah? yeah? And you bake them, and then we found... And then you eat them. <laughs> <laughs> it was legendary food. <laughs> Yeah, so we baked them, and then I managed to find some old demo stuff on a cassette tape. Really? Yeah. So the anthology is uh, the first two albums, the EP, and I think six. Is it six? Six tracks. We did six. six we did, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, Dennis, you know, we did put the artwork together, and we tried to get the artwork, so it was a combination of all the different album covers yeah. in, in one. So it's got the legend logo, it's got the death in the nursery, and it's got the eye, and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And he did a fantastic job on it. Yeah. And, um, you know, the next you minute... Million, I, million um, <laughs> Not really. No. <laughs> <laughs> they say, we do it for the love, you know. Yeah. When people offer us money, we say, no, thanks, we just do it for the love. But whatever happens, you are now here at Keep Crew Festival, after mm. all these years, and maybe this is a door opener for anything else, because you were so amazing tonight. It's Thank unbelievable. You. Mm, that's a pretty you. appreciate that. I was there nearly crying when you were Yeah, most people do. <laughs> <laughs> because it was so amazing. Mm. So, oh, thanks. What? You you are from Sky News, aren't you? <laughs> 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 but wasn't it confusing for you back in the days when there were so many legends around, even in Great Britain? Well, yeah, there was sure. there was one one from Kent. In yeah. the south of England. Hideaway and songs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well that was it. I think it was only Hideaway. I think a yeah. lot of bands in that time just released singles. We were one of the uh, very yeah. first ones to actually do an album. Yeah. Then another album. Yeah. You know, and then an EP. Yeah. Whereas most of the other bands were doing singles. I think it was only us and Diamond Head at the time yeah. who actually did albums. Then after that came the likes of Angel Witch, who I think were playing yeah. here later tonight with their first album, uh, which has got the mighty Baphomet on it, which is a great, Baphomet. which is a great song, you know. Yeah. Yeah, but I don't know, we just, because we were in this little island in between the UK and That's France. Uh, it's only, uh, it's only nine miles by, uh, by five. And then you found all the musicians for this band. Yeah, we're yeah, the, only, the only people that live there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really but we had, we had no idea, so we were just doing our own thing and yeah. just enjoying it. I'd, I mean, I'd been playing in clubs and bands since I was like 14 or 15, you know, but always wanted to write my own material, so, yeah. you well, know. What was the biggest gig you played in the days? The biggest so gig in Jersey was probably Sporting Thin Lizzy. Oh. In oh. front of, I think there was about two and a half thousand there, so yeah. that was a good gig, you know, we got... Guys? Well, we were too good for them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we met them at soundcheck and stuff yeah. like that, but I think they were going through that, didn't as we were going through that period of decline, because Phil Lynott clearly wasn't well, they had Snowy White on guitar. And, oh, this was the same Yeah, yeah. But it was like, you know. But Phil Lynott was the actual only guy that came backstage and said, hey guys, great set. Really? Yeah, all well, oh, the others cool. were a little bit kind of uh, up their aims. Anyway. So, um, yeah, so no, a lot of respect for Phil Lynott, yeah. he, he respected it, so, uh, but it was a good gig, it was a good gig, you know. The most prestigious gig was playing the Marquee Club in London. And you played in the Marquee? Yeah. yeah. Great. And Lenny bought a copy of the album, yeah. Dead in the Nursery, asked us to sign it, and then he took us to a club afterwards. We can't remember much. We can't remember much after that. <laughs> <laughs> 
But yeah, because Lemmy always used to hang out at the marquee club, so yeah. that was a good night. I, I seem to remember Rock Goddess or something were in the club. Yeah, oh, right. yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, elements of UFO and Girl at the time. I think yeah, Phil yeah. Collin was in there, and there was White Snake members and stuff like that at that time. Yeah, it was from what we remember. I think we were a bit. The thing is, was basically off farewell concert. The sad thing for you financially is that Metallica happened. Uh, did a cover version of you? No, they, <laughs> no, they haven't done a cover version of anything. But and this is on the record. And if he wants to sue me, he can do. <laughs> Lars Ulrich taped our first album, yeah. all right, and circulated it to all his mates. <laughs> so if you're listening, Lars, where's my royalties? <laughs> so when got a copy of the CD? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, the cassette tape. I've got a photo photograph of the cassette tape. And all his mates say, "Yeah, Lars." Lars sent that to me. <laughs> <laughs> We're just being called for our signings. We are. Yeah, you need to do a signing session yeah, now. Yeah. I see you have even your own backs. I'm totally impressed now. <laughs> okay, thanks guys for this interview. Thank you, Thank you very much. It was a pleasure for me. It was a dream come true for me to see you uh, live. Thanks. You made a great job, by the way. I yeah. thought you said it before. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, man. And He's English humor, right? Ready? <laughs> <laughs>